Yo, Yo, I'm Patrick. I'm Chris. And in this video, we're going to show you how to reduce the number of queries executed by either Power BI or Excel. Chris, so I get asked the same question all the time, right? If I duplicate a query, duplicate a query, reference a query, I see lots of queries executing against my data sources. And I don't want that to happen. Is there a way to make it better? Absolutely. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find out all the little bells and whistles and tweaks that you can do in Power Query okay. and Power okay, BI. OK, Chris, instead of all this talking, you know what I like to do? Let's head over to my laptop. So in this video, we're going to focus on web services. But will this work with other data sources? This is absolutely going to work with other okay. data sources. Right. Okay. And when you talk about web services, you're talking about things like Facebook and Salesforce and things like that. Yep, correct? absolutely. Okay. Which are very, very common data sources for Power BI and Excel reports. All right, let's get into this. Enough talking. Let's go. All right, so this is going to take a little bit of setup. But what we've got here on screen is Microsoft Flow. Now, you can do a lot of cool stuff in Flow. What I've got here is a web service that's built in Flow. It doesn't do anything complicated apart from when you call the web service, it will wait five seconds. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to return the text, hello. OK, got so it. So really, really simple. And the reason I like Flow is if you go over here to this browser tab, we can actually see when the web service gets called. So it's like profiling. It's yeah, like a SQL profile exactly. and watching the queries so that are coming it's through. It's a web service. Whenever you call it, it's going to wait five seconds, return hello, and we're going to go here, and we're going to see how many times the web service gets called. OK, let's see, let's see how this works. All right. All right, let's go to Power BI Desktop. So this is main Power BI Desktop. I've got a data set here. It's got three tables here. And those, called... those tables are calling the web service? Well, yeah, we're going we're gonna to okay. get to that. All we're going right, to get to that. Right, so right, three right. tables, if we have a look, they've all got the same thing in, just a column called column one and hello. If we go to Edit Queries, we'll see how all this works. So I've gone into the Power Query Editor here. We go to View. We go to Query Dependencies. And this is where we can see a nice diagram showing how we're calling the web service and how the data gets to these three tables, Reference Query 1, Reference Query 2, and Reference Query 3. So you have actually referenced the base query. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Right. So we've got this query here called call web service. Mm -hmm. This is the query that actually calls the web service. And reference query one, reference query two, reference query three, reference that query called call web service. Okay. Now, call web service is disabled. The output of this query is not being loaded into the Power BI data set. But these three queries here, reference query one, two, and three, these are going to be loaded into the web service. Now, you look at this. How many times do you think the web service is going to be called? Three. Three? Sounds like sounds reasonable. Yeah, one you for might, each one of the references. You know, it could be. You might say, well, isn't it going to be called once? Is it going to be called more than that? The point is, it's difficult to know because there's difficult. so difficult. much going on inside the Power Query engine that can affect this. So, it, wait, I'm going to change. I want to change my answer. Since yeah. this is a reference, I'm going to say once. All right. That's how. That's what most people would, yeah. would say. I want to change my answer. It's if just we duplicate it, yeah, then it would be three times. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All, right. All right, 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 right. So I'm going to close. Well, we're going to go back to the main Power BI window. Yep. And I can click Refresh. And this is going to run all of those three queries that actually get loaded into the data set. So we click Refresh here. It's chugging away. It's evaluating. In a moment, we're going to see it's going to load the data to the model. Here, we can see it's hitting the web service. And it's going to take five seconds for each call. Right, we've loaded the data. OK. Now, let's go back to this window. We're going to click Refresh. And we'll see how many times the web service has been executed. It's been executed one, two, three, four, five, six times. Six times. Six times. That is not good, is That's it? That's not efficient. That's not, not efficient. efficient. That's you not know, efficient. this is taking five seconds to run. What happens if you're like hitting some web service that takes a really long time and returns lots of data? Then we got problems. We got well, big problems. Well, yeah. This is this is why people always ask you and me those questions. Well, All we're right. going to fix it. We're going to fix okay. it. There are lots of different things that are going on here. If we go back to Power BI Desktop. There are a couple of settings that you can change in the Options dialog for Power BI Desktop, which will stop all this happening, or stop or affect all this anyway. 
So I'm going to go to File, Options and Settings, Options. And up here, we've got the Options dialog. Now, if we go down to Current File Data Load. So what you're doing now is only going to affect this file, not any other files that are open in Power BI. Uh, these things will be saved if you close and reopen other things inside Power okay. BI Desktop. Okay. So some of these things will save, some of them okay. won't. But okay. 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 okay, all right. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to deselect this Allow Data Preview to Download in the background. So is that saving me a query, maybe? Well, um, it, not in this case, okay. but in a lot of cases it can do. This is probably the first thing that I would do when I see multiple queries going off to the data source. Should I do this by default? Well, no, not really. I'll explain why. OK. So what this does when it's set up is that when you refresh queries just by clicking that Refresh button in the main Power BI window like I just did, it will not only run the queries, it will also say, let's refresh all the little previews you see in the Power Query Editor window with all of the kind of like uh, the data that you see at each individual step. Gotcha. So it'll make the Power Query Editor window faster, gotcha. but it can make, other, it can make refresh slower. Okay. All right, so we're going to do that. So I'm going to turn that off. Mm -hmm. There's something else that I'm going to do here, which is a little bit more, well, maybe not dangerous, but you've got to think about it. I like danger, Chris. <laughs> You live dangerously, I know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Power BI Desktop to ignore the data privacy set level set for this file. You wrote a blog post on this. Yeah. Now you should read this blog post. You should read this. You should read all about data privacy before you do this. So there's going to be a link down in the comments below. You should go read that blog post. Good. So okay. go and read it before you do this. The data privacy levels basically stop the Power Query engine sending data from one data source to another. Okay. Which could, you know, if you're sending data to a data source somewhere outside your organization, it could be a privacy breach. You could lose your job. Okay. I hate that to happen to you. But in this case... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's keep going, Chris. Obviously, I was like exaggerating that. I don't really care if you lose your job. You don't care. I knew you no. did. That's why I laughed. <laughs> not you like can, his boss. <laughs> you can care yeah. less if I get fired or not. It Absolutely. doesn't matter. So in this case, I know there is no way that data is being sent from one data source to another because there's only one data source. So we can turn this off. And in this situation, if I'm ignoring the data privacy levels, this is just for this particular file because if we go up to here, this is combined data oh. according to each file's privacy settings and ignore it here. We click OK, and it will stop doing the data privacy checks. So those two now, settings are critical. The data privacy checks can, again, cause like extra you know, queries to be run. Okay. Because sometimes to know whether you're sending data from one data source to another, mm -hmm. then it's got to actually run the queries. But there's more that we've got to do here. But wait, there's but more. But wait, there's always more. <laughs> I'm going to show you something a little bit scary here. All right, so this is the M code for that call web service query. At the moment, all it's doing is calling the web service. I've got a bit of extra code here that isn't being used at the moment, mm -hmm. but I'm going to change a few things, uncomment it, and this is now going to add this extra little bit of code here. So another reason why the Power Query engine can go away and get data from a data source multiple times is because it needs to know some metadata. It needs to know some information yeah. about the table you're getting back. You know, we're going to a web service here. What's it bringing back? Well, I know it's bringing back a table with one column called column one in it. But the Power Query engine doesn't know that. That could, that could change. Yep. Now, what I've got here is a bit of extra code that tells the Power Query engine that this query is going to return a table with one column in called column one. And when the query get, query runs, the first thing the Power Query engine is going to do is it's going to say, let's go to the data source, let's get the column headers, but don't return any rows. Without this code, to be able to do that, it would have to actually go and run the entire query. This code here simply says, if I'm asking for no rows, well, just say that we're going to get a table with one column called column one in, which is just text. Okay. So we've got that. When I click Done, this is going to execute the query again. So that, that's going to be something we have to watch out for when we're looking inside the, um, well, the flow. Yeah. But we go to Home. We go to Close and Apply. And because it's changed, it's now going to reload Reference Query 1, Reference Query 2, 
reference query three, and we go back to flow, hit refresh, and what we will see are just three hits. So by setting those settings, right, by modifying those settings and making a little small change to the code, mm -hmm. we cut the number of query executions. Yeah, we've now. gone down from six to three. But can we do better? Of course we All can right. do better. OK. All right. Now, this is where we're going to go on a voyage of discovery to the innermost details of Power Query, query execution. Can, can we make ready? the voyage rather short? Absolutely. We go to File, Options, and Settings. Another setting. Another, Another setting. one here. Now, by default, We'll go to data load. By default, this enable parallel loading of tables setting is set here. Got this it. simply says when those three tables are refreshed, the three queries are going to be run, and they're going to be run in parallel. That's going to be good, right? Isn't it? That's yep. going to make things faster. Yep. It's going to make things slower in some cases. Why? All right, I'll do this. Let's disable it first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to click OK, and we're going to refresh. So now they run one at a time. They're going to run one after each other instead of all at the same time. Now, that seemed a lot faster, didn't it? Yeah. Let's go back up to here, and let's refresh. There's one query execution. Why is this? Caching? The power, exactly. The Power Query engine, when it goes to some data sources, not all, but web services are on, among them, it will say, if I'm making the same request to a web service multiple times and nothing's changed, well, why do I need to actually go and do it? Go and make that request multiple times. So the first time it makes that request, it will get the data. And then after that, it will do some caching. But if it's running in parallel. It doesn't know. Uh, it doesn't know that. By saying run it one after another, the first time it'll reference query one runs, it will go to the web service, get the data. The app will be cached. And because reference query two and reference query three run after it, it's there able to make use of the cache. Let me ask you the big question. But what if I duplicate? Well, if you duplicate, the same thing is going to happen. Because this is our chance to kind of go and understand a little bit about what happens inside the Power Query engine and the difference between duplicating and referencing and things like that. So let's go and have a look at our query dependencies here. There's our core web service that gets the data. Reference query one, reference query two, reference query three. A lot of people will look at this and think, well, the way it works is that yes. when we refresh all this, it's going to call the web service once. And then because these are referenced, it will just simply say, call the web service. And that value flows from here down to here, here, and here. And one query. That's exactly. That's not how it happens. Sure. What happens when we do the refresh on the data set is that this gets refreshed, this gets refreshed, and this gets refreshed. Now, they're happening in series at the moment. They happened in parallel originally. But the data flow, the, the request goes backwards. So when I refresh reference query one, it simply says, well, I want to get the data for this. That means I'm going to have to call this query and run this one. The same thing happens here. The same thing happens here. That's why we were seeing three requests here, because these were all happening all at the same time. They were going oh. back. No, well, no caching was happening. We're still, in this situation, executing that query three times. It's just that now the caching is kicking in and stopping it. The data doesn't flow from here down Goes like this. It flows from the beginning and kind of pulls it back, pulls it through. We can turn off that caching. But by default, the caching is turned on. Yeah, by default, the caching is turned on. but. We can go to the advanced editor. For and the I, base query. For the base query, for the call web service. Mm -hmm. And by simply adding this extra option, is retry equals true, that's going to stop that caching happening. And we're going to prove that even with it all running in series, one after the other, it's going to go and get the data three times. That's going to refresh. That's going to be a call for the web service that we're going to ignore. We click close and apply. And there we go, one. And this is going to take five seconds the first time. The difference is now, because we're saying don't do any caching, the uh, second one is going to take five seconds. And the third one is going to take five seconds. Because it's calling Again. that query. Each exactly, time. Right. yes. Let's go to here, have a look. And what we'll see is one, two, three. And that one that failed is the one that was going to refresh. 
what we were seeing in the Power Query editor. I closed that. It failed right. because I closed the uh, Power Query editor window before it did anything right. else. Wow. Yeah. The last thing, the last okay. thing I'm going to show. Okay. I don't want you to get bored. <laughs> I'm not getting bored. I don't want you to get bored. <laughs> I know you've got a short attention span, <laughs> but this is gripping. Okay. It's so, gripping. It's gripping. This it's is gripping. gripping. It's gripping stuff. It has to be All a right. British thing. It is. Okay. Go ahead. Go so ahead. you know a little bit more about the Power Query engine than other people. A little bit. And you've heard about this function called table.buffer. I have. And you think, ah, well, surely table.buffer is going to save us here. It's going to make it Because nice. if we go back into, yeah, and let's edit queries, and let's go to web service. Surely, if we go to here, let's uncomment this and say, let's now do some buffering. Isn't that going to help something? Of course, that it, gonna of course it's going to help. All right. It's going to use the cache. Well, let's see. Let's click done. It's not going to use the cache because I turned off the caching. Oh, but you turned I'm off the caching. Turned ah, off the caching, but now caching. I'm buffering in memory. Right. The caching is on yep. disk. This is buffering yep, in memory. Yep, yep. All right. So let's close and apply. And we're going to see, just by looking at this, whether it's faster or slower. Now, this doesn't look good. No. It's going to be slower. Yeah, you can already see yep. that it's a lot slower. But it's not using the buffer. Well, it is doing it's buffering, but the buffering is not doing what you think it's going to do. I damn sure it. All right, look at this. This is already slow. This is already very wow. slow. You can see it's going back, getting the web service. That's five seconds. Two, three, four, five. Finish. And there we go, like one, two, three, four, five, six. We're back up to six. So table.buffer has made things worse. Don't ask me why we've got up to six again, because I frankly don't know. Okay, I was about to ask you that, but, but since you don't know. But I will show you, I will explain what's going on here and why table.buffer is not the answer to your prayers. So we've got table.buffer in call web service here. Yep. Now remember what I said when we refresh the data set, reference query one gets run, reference query two gets run, reference query three gets yes. run. In each case, call web service is being executed. So it's still being executed three separate times. Every time it gets executed, table.buffer loads the output of the web service into memory. But table.buffer can't share its output between multiple query executions. Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing that buffering three times for no good reason, because once we've buffered it for reference query one, reference query two can't make use of that because that's a separate execution. And it's going to go away and go to the web service and get the data, buffer it again. The same thing's going to happen with reference query three. But if I was reusing, reusing the data, multiple times in reference query yeah. one, which is certainly something that you would you might well happen, that's when buffering is uh, useful. Yeah, but buffering it. is not useful in this situation when you're running a query and then you think, I'm going to reuse that query by referencing it in other ones as well. All right. There's a lot of information, Chris. My mind is blown slightly. All right. Slightly blown. Well, go and have a lie down. Put a <laughs> wet flannel on your forehead. So what do you guys think? You got any questions? You got any comments? This was bananas, Chris. I got to be honest with you. This is way more than I thought. You know what to do. Post them in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam, myself, and Chris, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm not going to be invited back, am I? <laughs> yes.